Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Peace be with you all. Today's video is going to be kind of different because it is not going to be rhyming. It's not a poetry. It's not scripted. I just decided to make this video to share with you guys who I am, where I come from, uh, what got me to Islam, why I became a Muslim, and why am I making the Dawah videos that I'm making. So, uh, to start, I'm originally from Russia. My family came to America when I was nine years old. And my mom is Christian and my dad is Jewish. My stepdad, but he raised me. He's Jewish. So I was raised in a semi-religious Jewish Christian family. And personally, I never cared about God. It was never... It was never a topic for me. I felt like it was just, you know, stories of my grandma and whatnot. And it has nothing to do with, you know, with reality, with current reality. So religion um, was never a topic that I would think of or even care about until I hit my teenage years and I hit depression and just overwhelming emotions and going through a whole bunch of stuff that I felt that I need to connect with something higher, so I decided to look into God. And when I started reading the Bible, it was like for the first page, for example, it said that, you know, God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested and got refreshed. To me, it was just, um, it didn't make sense. I was like, God, God rested, refreshed, like, no, you know, I, it was not feeling right. I feel like these are human qualities in my mind. I feel like God is something, you know, he's our creator. He's something bigger. He doesn't need no rest. He doesn't need none of that. So I saw the flaws in the Bible. So I figured, you know what? I was right. It is the tales of the ancients. Nobody cares about it. Forget it. But maybe it is not Christianity. Maybe I'm just looking to a wrong religion. Maybe I should look into Buddhism. And so I started looking into Buddhism and concept of Tao, which was actually very interesting, but there was also things that threw me off because you Buddhism is not like it's not a religion, okay? You could be, you know, a Buddhist Christian, you could be an atheist Christian. Like Buddhist is just kind of a way of life, I guess. So there was no connection with God for me. So that was also put aside. So after Buddhism, the next thing I looked into was actually Hinduism. I figured they're very ancient religion, you know, um, they maybe they know what, what's going on. Maybe I should be meditating Kundalini and, you know, <laughs> just those kind of things. So I looked into Hinduism, but as soon as I hit the whole, you know, monkey God, four hands God, god incarnate all of that it was just done i was like i can't i can't follow this you know i cannot buddhism is not really religion hinduism is, is to me it was nonsensical because of like their descriptions of god you know and christianity just didn't make any sense either because i saw so much contradictions and and mistakes from my point of view from my kind of an inner belief in God. So, um, what I looked into after that was polytheism. I was like, you know what, maybe religions of even more ancient people are right. Maybe the whole, you know, statue worshiping thing, like, is a thing. Maybe they're just spirits that created this universe. And if we have, if you know, we have these statues, that's how we connect with them. So it was a funny story because at that time, I actually decided to go and buy a statue. Yes, I went to the store. It was it's called Psychic Eye. It's some kind of a new age store, and I walk in there, and I'm like, I want to buy a statue of God. Do you have any? And as I said that, I realized how dumb I sound, and I'm like, the guy's gonna kick me out of here. But instead, he looks at me. He's like, Yes, we do. Which one would you like? And the whole situation was just so hilarious for me. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm thinking to myself, I'm here to buy a statue of God, God Almighty. And the guy's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, it's a normal thing. 
needless to say, I didn't buy anything. I went home, I was like, you know what, this is the end. I no longer believe in religion. It's all nonsense. I'm crazy and this gotta stop. And this is how I became an atheist. I decided that there is no God, there's none of this is true, it's just I'm wasting my time. And that led me to some of the darkest ages of my life. I mean, not caring led me to really not care. I, st I, was, I started drinking, I was partying, I was into criminal activity, doing a lot of bad stuff just because I felt the only way I could get in trouble if I will get caught and I'm not gonna get caught. Those deeds though, the, everything that I was doing, eventually it made me feel miserable. It made me feel like there's just nothing out there, life is pointless, you know, I could do all this evil stuff and I could get a whole bunch of money doing it, but I don't feel happy. I don't feel complete. I don't feel, I don't feel my life is worth anything. And I got seriously depressed. Like I had a concept in my mind that I knew, okay, if there is God, this is how he should be, you know, he should not, it's, he cannot be a human, he cannot be something that eats and sleeps, he cannot have like two arms, three arms, or be blue, green, whatever, like, there it has to be something out there because I could feel it, I didn't have knowledge of it, you know, the closest thing I knew to God was Christianity and that wasn't, that just was not cutting it, but I didn't know what it is, and I remember one time me and my girlfriends, we were at a, actually at a bar and there was a group of guys standing there and i could hear the conversation and i've noticed one of the guy's name was islam his name was islam and i'm trying to listen kind of to what they're talking about because we're just all standing outside and i could hear them and i hear one of them saying that yeah there's this uh, religion like i could hear them talking about islam i'm not sure even how their conversation about that started but what I got out of it, that Islam is a religion. And I, up until then, I used to think Islam is like some, some city in the Middle East where like these crazy terrorist people are from. I never even considered it a religion. Like from the religions I was reading about, Islam just never came up. So for me, I was like, man, I, can't, I don't even know anything about it. Like somebody mentioned it and I didn't feel like I could, you know, even go talk to them and say, you know what, I know what you're talking about. And um, anyway, it just got stuck in my head. So a few days later, I was actually at work and their conversation kind of popped up into my mind again. And I was like, you know what? Since I already know about all of these other views, worldviews, I want to kind of uh, top it off. And I want to make sure I know everything about, you know, everything in my mind. So I Googled Islam found out that their book, they actually have a book, and it's the Quran, and decided to read it. So the first thing I read was the uh, beginning of Surah Baqarah, sec second chapter, and actually in my last video about the Quran, the quotes that come up in the beginning of the video, these were actually the same quotes that I read, the, the same page that I read. And it was talking about how, you know, this message is for those who believe in, in one God, who believe in the unseen. And it was, it was something about that message. And in the end, where I stopped reading, it said that basically those who do believe in prophets and do believe in the unseen and do believe in God and all of these things, those are the successful. And at that time, I, I can't even describe what happened. As I was reading it, I, I start having tears floating out of my eyes. Like my body starts shaking. I start, I start crying in my brain. I was like, Oh my God, this is it. Like I didn't read nothing else. I didn't read, I have no, no concept of what Islam is. I just read that first page and it was like a light bulb in my brain. I, it was just amazing for me. I could not stop myself from crying. Something happened inside my heart and my mind that I, I just couldn't stop and I was at work. I had to leave the, the office I say, you know, tell them that something serious happened. I have to be outside for a few moments. I went outside and I just cried. Go back in there, Google how to become a Muslim. And it said, you know, you have to read the Shahada. 
And I, um, in the English letters, I actually read the Shahada right then and there without having no info on anything else. I just felt like this is what I was looking for and this is what I was uh, missing. And that's how I became <laughs> instantly a Muslim, not realizing then yet that it's just, it's just beginning of this whole story of what happens after. So I become a Muslim and i know nothing about praying covering i don't know any muslims i it's just for me it was like just like i was christian back then now i know i'm not a christian i'm a muslim i didn't feel i didn't know i have to follow and actually do anything i didn't know i have to pray five times a day. i didn't know nothing at all but somehow what happened just few months some months passed by and i get introduced to a muslim a muslim guy oh pause that before before that actually happened, uh, I told my family that I, I converted and um, they kicked me out of the house. They told me that, y you know, you the Christian stay here or if you want to be a Muslim, just go. And I left. I left and I was, um, you know, part homeless, I guess. I was just sleeping at a friend's house. But yeah, a few months after that, I met a Muslim guy and fell in love and got married to him. Still not knowing much about Islam and um, the relationship it was good in the beginning but then it just went bad because he as good as he was he came from extremely strict family who were not happy about him marrying a convert and I could not connect to anybody and all of a sudden I just got hit with like Okay, everything is haram. You know, you cannot go out with your friends anymore. You cannot be drinking. You cannot be partying. You cannot do this and that and this and that and this and that. And my, I was like, whoa, like this is, I mean, okay, it's a religion. I believe in God, but I, I, I didn't, when did I sign up to give my whole life away? Like, how am I even supposed to live any differently than what I, how I try, but it was, it was too much for me. It was overwhelming for me. And Again, I was put in a position where I could not really find any friends and I could not connect with his family. For six years that we were uh, married, I felt completely, I felt alone. And I feel like that is what started to take me away from Islam. So anytime I would see something bad from him, I would actually blame Islam for it. You know, you're not letting me go and see my girlfriends. Um, that's because of Islam, Islam is... So I started building this because I had no knowledge in the beginning and suddenly I had a lot of negativity about it. I started stepping away from the deen. I started stepping away from religion and I just went astray. I went severely, severely astray and I ended up losing my family. It was actually... Um, a mixture of happy and very sad days for me because on one side okay the six-year marriage that I had and you know I cared about that person it was it was much more to it but I basically would even though I just I lost it all I lost that I lost my religion but inside I still wanted to help people I still wanted to be a good person I just thought that the religion aspect is not for me because there I just don't know enough about it to care as much as I, I guess, should be caring. So I just, I went astray. I stopped following anything at all. You know, the six years I was praying, I stopped praying. I just, I, I went astray. I mean, what can I say? And um, what I started to do was I started doing uh, yoga and I got into shamanism. For those of you who don't know shamans, they deal with, you know, spirits and healing and whatnot. And I actually come, my grandmother is a Siberian shaman, so it wasn't too foreign for me. So I got into learning yoga and got into, you know, I went to Peru for ayahuasca ceremonies. Um, so I got into that side of kind of a spirituality and then after a few years, I started teaching yoga. It was a Korean energy yoga. So it was more, um, more so an energy practice than an actual yoga per se. 
um, I taught that for a couple of years and I got into um, being a, what they call the Don Masters, energy master. And for a time I was thinking this is what I'm going to stick with because I got to help people physically and energetically and I was at peace with that group of people. They were a very, very nice group of people. Um, but then again, some things happened. I felt like they want me to commit more. They, they wanted me to uh, be full time at the center, you know, and travel and learn things. I kind of didn't want to do that at that time. I was thinking more business. You know, I realized that, okay, I'm growing up. I really have to focus on business more. And what happened was a very difficult decision for me to make, but I actually quit yoga and I started focusing on regular sports and business. Business life went actually very good for me. I was working um, on my own business. I was helping others uh, grow their businesses. I was into doing um, Amazon, basically brand development. And I became pretty successful in that field, spent a lot of time behind the computer. And when I was not behind the computer, I would do sports like parkour, like extreme sports, parkour, uh, tricking, try to do some gymnastics, um, kung fu, basically a whole bunch of sports and a whole bunch of computers. And that was that that's what my life was about. I was making relatively good money. I was pretty happy with myself. Um, until I got bored. I literally got bored. I Too much computer time made me feel like I want to go into a different field where I could um, interact with people more and not really have to face the screen for, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day. So I got into selling cars and I met a group of people who became my friends who were on the car auction. And I kind of stuck with them for, um, for actually for a year. And I was into yeah, selling cars and uh, getting them from the auctions, fixing them up or whatnot, and then reselling them. And it was, it was my most days of, I would say, ignorance because that group of people, <sighs> I do not want to call them bad because they don't know that they're bad. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. They were nice to their own, but very cruel to outsiders. And um, not only I would, you know, party with them, and again, there would be criminal stuff and drugs involved. Like we got robbed. Like it was, it was just some insane times, you know. Um, we got into, you know, fist fight with some tweakers and one of them had a knife and then again like I said two robberies it was just crazy and it got to a point where they were telling me they're like um you're too nice you're not gonna you know survive this you have to be more tough you have to be more mean and so they literally started to teach me how to hate people they would say if somebody says this don't reply nicely you know reply with basically something like F off, you know, they would literally give me instructions on how to be mean. Like it just came to a rid ridiculous point. It is at that time when I started thinking about Islam again. I just realized that I went way off any good path or any relatively good path. Like I was realized that not only what I'm doing is horrible, the future that I'm going to have is also going to be horrible because of all the stuff I was doing and everything has consequences, you know, I, even though I still cared about them and I still really, I, I loved those people. I don't know what was it, but I cared about them. But I, as I, I started basically listening to lectures, uh, Islamic lectures and Islamic music. These were the two changes that I made um, in the beginning. And the more I would listen to them, uh, the more I felt like I stopped belonging in, with that group. Basically, I still cared about them, but I just could not kind of, um, I could not stand um, when they would play bad music anymore. I felt 
resistance in my mind or when i would see like they would bring alcohol to the house i would feel resistance like the more time would pass and the more reading and studying i would do the more um kind of separated i felt from them and it's it, it lasted for a while it lasted for a while all the all the questions i had years before that the reason you know like the questions i had when i lost my family um all of these questions would start getting answered like one by one every video i would watch would just even though it would be a random video it would somehow answer one of those questions from before and it was just mind-blowing because every single question i had got answered you know every doubt I had got answered everything that was keeping me away from Islam these years it just it just got answered to me and one day I was driving to a gas station and it hit me I'm like I cannot stay here anymore or I, I have to do something I have to either guide them to Islam or leave or I have to do something but I didn't know what to do and um Interestingly enough, a week before this happened, before the gas station trip, I bought a Quran. I decided to start reading Quran again. I bought a Quran. It came. So what I did was I got home from the gas station and started to have a serious um, kind of a conversation with my own self. Basically, I told myself that what's you know what's good a choice if it's not done now like what if i don't if i don't change what is gonna happen like is this is how i'm gonna live the rest of my life selling cars and being with this group of people or am i gonna do something you know different am i gonna connect back to god am i gonna do what's right but i was very confused i was like man maybe i'm just crazy like i have a good group of friends i have a good job and here like i'm tripping out about something like, who cares, you know? But I remembered one thing. I remembered somebody told me, I heard before, that when you cannot make a decision, you should ask a question and um, open the Quran and see if it has good information in it, then you should proceed with the decision. And if it has bad information in it, then don't proceed with the decision. So I decided to actually do that. Um, none of my friends were there. None of my friends were home. And I, my first question was, what will be my future if I stay here, if I stay with them, if I stay right there? And the chapter where I opened it was talking, the page where I opened it was talking about Prophet Lot's wife, how she got left behind with a group of evil people and she was not basically of those who were saved. Like, wallahi, when I read that, I had like chills running. I knew this was talking about me and I knew this was my future if I stay. And then the second question I asked was, what's going to happen if I leave? You know, if I just stop this right now and I leave. And the page that I came, to, came on to was talking about a group of believers who were glorifying God and who were basically happy. And that was it. For, for me, it was like, a, I, I was like in a twilight zone. I was like, wow, I just got my answers. If I stay here, this is my future. And if I leave, this is my future. And I kid you not, I closed the book, I packed all of my stuff, everything I had, put it in the car, and left. And I left from California to Arizona. I just, I dropped my whole life. And I talked to, you know, people back at the auction and I told them I'm, I'm done, I'm going, I'm going to Arizona, I'm never coming back. And um, that's how I ended up in the city of Sedona, Arizona. Driving to Arizona, I had one intention. I wanted to get there and I wanted to get my religion on point. I wanted to start covering, I wanted to stop, you know, partying, stop drinking, stop hanging out with bad people, stop doing everything that's not, you know, that God would not be happy with me. And uh, that was my intention. And upon arriving to Arizona and getting a new place to live, I met my roommates who were Islamophobic. <laughs> And when I told them I'm Muslim, their first reaction was like, Ugh. <laughs> it was something like this. And just there was a few things that they said. I'm not going to go too much into it here. But a few things they said that actually hurt me. And it was frustrating about Islam. Like, 
it just frustrated me so bad but i knew that if i'm gonna start responding to them first of all i still had a very short temper i knew that it's gonna probably end in a fight and secondly it's not i'm not gonna achieve anything so i just went to my room and i had to release the frustration somehow so what i did i started writing and i wrote a poem called we are muslims which was actually ended up being my first video um note here i never really went to school my education literally consider consists of grade one to grade six of regular school and then i did not go seven or eight i went one year of grade nine in russia um uh, for the year that i visited there and that was it i didn't go to college i mean i pretty much don't have much education at all so the night when i got to my room and i started writing and i started writing a poem it was it was like almost mind-blowing to my own self because i'm not a writer and i'm not a poet i don't i can't you know that's not my thing so when i read it i was like it pretty, turned out pretty good and um maybe i really felt it you know i posted that poem on my facebook page and i got somewhat good feedback you know and I was like, yeah, maybe I should start writing more often. Maybe I should develop this in me. Maybe one day I could become, a, you know, an English teacher or something. I kind of had these thoughts. Uh, but that was about it, you know. I was excited about the poem. Turned out to be nice. But I didn't have any more thoughts further than this. So, a few days after I wrote that poem, um, it was... I don't remember. It was morning or, or noontime. I left my house. I was about to drive somewhere. And as I'm walking, all of a sudden, I see this vision in front of my eyes, like literally a vision, like a screen of movie playing in front of me. And in that vision, I see American flag and United States of America, right? But United States of America is changing into Islamic States of America. And I was like, what? <laughs> what, what is... It was just such a weird thing for me because, I mean, you're walking to your car, you're not thinking about anything, and all of a sudden it's like a movie screen to you, and you're seeing this, and it's not a normal thing to be seeing. I mean, Islamic states of America. But that vision, it kind, it got, it made my heart beat fast. You know, I felt like, man, maybe this is a sign that I should, uh, I should get into Dawah, that I should tell people see islam from the how i see it because it's really an amazing thing you know it helped me and cured me so many times throughout my life and i got very excited about the vision i was like you know what maybe this is it i'm gonna i'm gonna start doing dawah i'm gonna start calling people to islam you know maybe help a lot of americans and this is what i should do so i told my muslim friend about this vision and I was super excited. I was like, yo, I have this, I saw this vision. It's going to be, you know, great. Let's, uh, let's do something, you know, let's help people in America find Dean and all that. And his reaction, though supportive, it, uh, it wasn't as enthusiastic as, as mine was. <laughs> He's, he told me pretty much simply that you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. And there's just so much of politics stuff that you don't know. And even though it's great and I support you, but yeah give it some thought his reaction kind of brought me back to earth i was like okay i saw something it's over you know like i'll just study dean by myself and you know whatever god guides me to he guides me to and this vision was just was just nothing i basically scrubbed it over like brushed it off and kind of forgot about it for for about two days um until I had a near-death experience. So my near-death experience happened about a couple of days after the whole conversation with my um, with my friend. And what happened was I was driving on a highway, um, and the speed limit there was seventy-five miles an hour. And my car comes to an incline, and I'm driving and I'm realizing the car is gaining speed so I want to press brakes to slow the car down and I press my brakes and the brakes do not work yes I am flooring them 100% to the floor and nothing is happening and because the car is on the incline it starts to gain speed so I'm terrified I'm terrified 
my brain starts processing this information, realizing that this is it. This is how most likely I'm going to die. I'm panicking and there's cars around me. So I'm like honking, you know, turning on my um, emergency lights so people get out of my way. And I'm looking at my speedometer and it goes like 75, 80, 85, 90. And it starts going past 90 when I'm realizing that I'm, I'm going to die. And what do I do? So my first thought was I have to call my mom. I pick up my phone. At that point, I just pick up my phone because I know that I'm, I'm done. There's nothing I could do. I want to call her. My phone has no signal. So um, I put down my phone and I start praying. And I start asking God that if this is my time, please take me painlessly. And I start saying my Shahada, which is basically what you're supposed to say when you're, you know, when you're dying uh, or becoming a Muslim. You say a Shahada. So I said my Shahada and I was like, God, if this is it, I'm ready to go. You know, take me. I don't want to feel pain. I'm done. And because I knew that if I try to press emergency brakes, like the car might spinning, I didn't want to hit anybody else. So my plan was to just to throw myself off the road because there was like a big ditch in there. And because of the speed I was going, which was way past 90 at that point, I knew there was no chance of survival. Um, so I say that and I ask God to, to basically save me. I said, if, if you take me, I'm, I'm ready. But if you do save me, I promise that I'm going to spend the rest of my life on your path. And as I say that, I press brakes one last time and subhanAllah, it works and my car starts slowing down. I cried. I was, I literally started crying. I stopped the car eventually and for a few minutes, I was, I was just crying nonstop. I was shaking. It was, it was very enlightening. In the morning I wake up, I cannot believe I'm alive. Like that whole story just keeps rerunning through my head and it was, I could not, I, I just could not believe I survived that. I was 100%, without a doubt, 100% certain that this is how I die. Like when you're going 95 plus an hour and you're flooring your brakes and nothing is happening, you know you're not coming out of there in one piece. I was sure I was going to die, but I didn't. But that promise that I made, it was like so sharp in the morning in my mind. And I knew that I have to, I have to keep that promise. I promised God that if he saves me, I'm going to spend the rest of my life on his cause. And I knew I had to keep the promise. So the next morning, um, it was, I had no more doubt about my vision and I had no more doubt about what I'm supposed to be doing. And this is how I decided to uh, take the poem that I wrote in the beginning, make it into a YouTube video and continue making different videos answering the most um you know often asked questions about islam or answering things about islam that i had trouble with and i wish somebody showed me in the beginning um you know years ago and talking about different misconceptions and basically inviting and calling people to to one god to monotheism and since then that has became my goal and that is what i've been doing and this is how most of you guys met me through one of my earliest videos. Now, all of this happened not so long ago. My first video, I believe, is only a month and a half old or around a month-ish old. Um, so it's still beginning of my journey. But this is how I got here. And this is why I got here. And um, I'm looking forward to completing my promise to God. And... Um, I'm very grateful for you guys, whoever is watching this and whoever has been following me on my channel. It just uh, motivates me to keep going. And thank you guys for that. And um, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you kind of know more about me and feel, um, understand me more, I guess. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in uh, my next videos. Thank you very much for listening. Assalamu alaikum and have a great day.